Good morning, everyone. As we settle in this morning, I would like to invite you to type your announcement into the chat box. There are still many ways to connect at Westwood, including through our weekly worship services, Minister Coffee Hour on Wednesday morning, and Children's Story Corner Saturday afternoon. Uh, please view the calendar on our website, westwoodunitarian.ca for more information, links and things like that. Come as you are, open to all. Okay, so I invite you now to stay muted and sing along to our first hymn this morning. Number 361, Enter, Rejoice and Come In, played by Sheila Kaloran. Enter, rejoice. We pause to affirm that the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so, providing a rich and fertile context as we gather together this morning. Westwood's building is located on Treaty 6 in Edmonton, Alberta, along with many of us who are Zooming in this morning. As Unitarian Universalists, our first principle is the inherent worth and dignity of every person, which I believe is a keystone in reconciliation. I acknowledge my role as a treaty person and feel called to explore what that means and how to be a respectful and responsible ally. Welcome to Westwood Unitarian, a Unitarian Universalist community where we search for spirituality and our passion for justice meet and mingle, where our head and our heart are both invited to the same conversation, where there is more than one way of thinking. In this Zoom room, music is an expression of our joy, worship a sign of our faith, and acts of justice a symbol of our hope. My name is Heather McLean Smith, and my pronouns are she and her. It is my honor to be your service leader this morning. There are many volunteers involved in keeping the website updated and our online activities running smoothly. I extend a special thank you to Alara for their help on slides, Sheila for her beautiful music this morning, and for our guest speaker, Nazra Adim. Thank you for joining us this morning. On behalf of the congregation, I bid a special welcome to those of you who have found us while we were online. We all long to be together again, and we are especially looking forward to meeting you. Westwood continues to build connections in ways we weren't expecting, and we are all being stretched in new ways. Westwood is fully online with services being uploaded each week. We are no longer bound by location, and that is something to celebrate. Our opening words this morning comes from the band The Bergsons with an interpretive dance performed by Sarah Gecko and Travis Maroran. Please enjoy. This is the keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going on, keep going on song. 
This is a keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going on, keep going on song. This is a keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going on, keep going on song. I am Abigail, and this is Sean, and we're so glad that you turned this on and welcomed us into your home, and you are welcome into our home. We're in. Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. We're in Sean's parents' house. <laughs> My parents' house. <laughs> Sean's parents' house. We were in Louisville when the shit hit, and we packed our three-year-old into a car. We drove kind of far. We drove here, and we've been so lucky and blessed to be safely here. And we thought we'd be here for like ten days. Tops. What did we know? What did we know? What did, what did we, we know? Want? We thought we knew a lot. We thought we knew a lot. Keep going, on song. This is a keep going, keep going, keep going on. Keep going on song. This is a keep going, keep going, keep going on. Keep going on song. And we've been mostly healthy. We've been okay. Are you okay? Are you all right? Are you okay? Are you all right? Are you okay? I hope your body is whole tonight. And if your heart is breaking, I hope it's breaking open. And if your breath is shaking, I hope it's shaking through. And then I hope that you've watched a lot of really great television, like a lot of it. And I hope that you find a hand lotion that actually makes your skin feel better. And I hope that you have enough to eat. I hope you're getting enough sleep and I hope you have enough good company or enough good memory to last you a long time. The lighting of candles and concern and celebration is a cherished tradition at Westwood, along with many other Unitarian Universalist congregations across Edmonton, Canada, and around the world. It continues to be a vital part of our time together, even more so now as we navigate the months apart. I invite you to type your message into the chat as we listen to a beautiful song how Could Anyone Ever Tell You, played by Sheila.
We have a new special candle this morning. We thought we would bring back the birthday candle. So I light this candle right here for all the birthdays we've had this month. So let's sing along muted to Rebecca. So we sing everyone a happy birthday. Oh, so fun. Okay, I like this last candle here for all of the joys and sorrows that remain in our heart and left unspoken. Please join me in the affirmation on the screen there. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of life in loving affection and trusting hope. Westwood is a self-sufficient community sustained and maintained by its membership. There are many ways to donate to Westwood, including by volunteering time, sharing your talent or donating financially. E-transfers can be made at info at Westwood Unitarian Ca. Please feel free along to Rebecca as we sing our offertory song. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, from together It is with much pleasure I would like to introduce Nazra. Nazra spoke at Westwood in 2018, and it is our pleasure to have them back a second time. They were appointed the City of Edmonton Youth Poet Laurier in 2016 and again in 2017, and was nominated in 2017 as the recipient for the Mayor Emerging Artist Award. I know Nazra as an important part of the social justice and arts community in Edmonton. Their poetry and writing always gives me goosebumps and tingles. Something tells me we are in for a ride this morning. Please welcome Nazra. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Westwood. What beautiful offerings already this morning. Um, happy birthday, Tasana. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful for Alara and um, Heather having me back. Um, we gonna get into it because it's time. It's a season of just getting to the point. Um, but today I wanted to talk about something that I've been thinking about and a lot of us have been forced to think about. Um, which is what does it mean when we're in a period of change and in particular what does it mean to rest um, and to answer the call of this time which um which has been to to pause um whether you like it or not <laughs> whether it's comfortable or not um and really take stock of what's going on in the world around us um, our intimate world, worlds in our homes, um, and then and then our greater worlds, right? Our communities, um, and so I've been meditating uh, over the last few months on what rest means to me, um, and what what it'll take for me to actually um, build a practice that allows me to rest. 
um, and allows the people around me to rest and take their time as well. Uh, all I've been hearing from every which way has been slow down. <laughs> and that is scary <laughs> in our bodies and minds and dreams and all of that. So um, one way I am, I am um, embodying that, if you will, uh, is so this is my test, trusty, dusty journal. Um, it has been my tried and true this, this whole season. Um, and I try and write spill onto a page um, for three pages every day. And today um, this came out, I was, I was going to just give myself some points and then speak from the heart, but I wrote from the heart. So bear with me as I also will need to slow down to read my writing. <laughs> because it is, um, but I hope that um, you're able to receive um, some of my musings on what it means to slow down during this wild time. Slow down, slow it all the way down. Because when you're slowing down, we make sure, we make room for breathing, for ourselves, for possibility, and for the beings around us. And beings are not just humans, plants, animals, elements, and spirits. We all, we are all beings that must be witnessed, cared for, and honored for balance. That's what true rest is for me. All my relations, moving, changing, adapting, creating in harmony. And to do that, we must listen to our bodies, listen to our people, listen to our hearts, because, because the information we need is inside us, waiting and moving towards and from our power fueled by it. And this never stops. It's natural law. So if we're not busy failing at insert here, what would we be? If having a job, J-O-B, all caps, wasn't the main goal of our lives, of doing, if doing wasn't at the center of every conversation about human worth or our value of life, what could the world feel like? What could it, what could it mean for our relationships? And where do we still believe we actually have autonomy and power or any kind of say so about our lives? who has repeatedly been looked to to save the day, care for the kids, keep the peace, sell the body. Who says thank you? Whose gifts go unnoticed? Why are we so obsessed? Why are we so obsessed with getting it right? How do we learn? Like really learn. When was the last time you felt like your own teacher? Like your own student? Why do we want to fix it? Fix, 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 fix. Why do we want to destroy? Where does this insatiable hunger for more or better or bigger come from? We know, it's capitalism. Power, and it's time to act like we know. Divesting from capitalism is a spiritual practice. It is, it is a reparenting practice. When we become codependent on systems telling us forcing us, indoctrinating us to believe 
the answers live in their hands. Everything that has taught us, we are individuals removed from responsibility of each other, that we don't know what's best for us, that we need guidance. Everything that prescribes us a mechanical identity. It's gotta go. When I say divesting from capitalism, I mean, I'm not talking about, I am talking about your politics, <laughs> but I'm not just talking about your politics or how you use your money. Capital, capitalism for me as a black person is rooted in controlling my narrative, is not rooted in turning people in to machines to serve a certain idea of what a life could be. A very limited life in my view, my opinion. And throwing people away, turning people disposable when they're not able to fit that idea. We are not machines. We are human beings, capital B E ings, beings, not human doings. I'm here to be who I am. I'm here to be, and I can only find out who Nasra is if I actually spend time with them. Time that I'm complaining about everyone not giving me attention that I'm complaining about everyone not giving me space to breathe and to realize and space to realize that I wasn't breathing because that happens, right? There's that moment, a moment of rest, a moment of peace, two minutes, an hour, weeks, months, years, whatever it takes to hear what we need to hear, to put down the armor, the masks, the coping mechanisms, long enough to hear the sound of our own voice and listen. And this is no small task. Coming back into the body is terrifying because it means you have to, you might have to revisit and re-experience all the pain and grief and shame and fear trapped. What was too powerful or too impractical to deal with at the time under capitalism's ongoing theft and pressure. It feels like you're back there all over again. And I know a lot of people have been working deeply on their mental health during this time because it feels like everything is, even if it, even the wounds came from when you were a child, which they probably do. But I mean, it's a long time ago, <laughs> but in the body, it doesn't feel that way. And so I know for myself, it has been disorienting feeling like well I'm not in that situation anymore why am I reacting as if I am and I'm realizing that when we do take that time to let things come up because we didn't get to before it's just it, it is being felt for the first time it is being felt really being felt in a new way So where are our anchors? Who knows you and the truth of who you are? Who can act as a reminder when the clouds roll in? If not a person you intimately know, then maybe an animal, a song, the earth underneath you, the breath that keeps coming back to you lovingly Every second you're alive. A friend of mine, Damaris, bless them, passed along this teaching um, that gravity is the earth's love language. Let me, let, me, let me run that back for you. Gravity 
is the earth's love language. Gravity is how the earth says, I love you, I'm gonna pull you close to me, honey. Gravity is the earth's way of grounding us and keeping us and reminding us that we're wanted, that we're close, and that we're being pulled in by something, by a force that says you, yes, you. Can that be your anchor? Black and indigenous people have been living in post-apocalyptic times for a very long while. We know our anchors. That's why we're still here. We've tended to them, fiercely protected them, and celebrated them. Celebrated the true nature of what keeps us alive and in harmony. We have kept the, we have kept the drum close to our hearts, centered lineages of self and community governance that relies on interpersonal power and the gifts of each and every individual. In my Oromo culture, I'm indigenous from East Africa, we are in what, one of our tenants in, as part of our governing system called Geda is assimilation. But assimilation doesn't mean the same thing. It, a piece of it is missing within the Western context. When we say assimilation, when we say assimilation, we means it goes both ways. It means when you come into our community, we are not only expecting you to bear witness, to honor, to respect our customs, our teachings, our specific cultural identity, but to bring yours in as well, that your identity practices and culture is just as important and actually acts as an offering to us to expand our communal cultural identity. That assimilation doesn't just happen one way. It doesn't just say you swallow because you traveled. It means we're sharing now. So what do you have? What are you coming with? What's in your medicine bag? And so to me, slowing down and divesting from capitalism, which is also divesting from anti-Blackness, anti-indigeneity, patriarchy, white supremacy, all that, all that, all the isms, is all about coming back to the self, remembering and witnessing who we are, witnessing who we are and including the ways that we've inflicted and been complicit in harm, both personally and outwards, but being compassionate enough and having hope, someone was talking about hope earlier, hope and an inner knowing enough to believe that we can change, that there's room for change, that there's room for possibility. And it's not about blame, it's about power, personal power choice and where do we have the power in our lives and how we can better direct it our passion our energy our power to nourish us in our communities rest allows us a moment a life even where there's room to recalibrate to change to decide to be different time for processing for healing for grief, we have lost so much. This year we have, we have lost so much. And black trans people are dying all over the world because we can't make space for change or difference, expansiveness, fluidity, for the beauty of possibility of who we can become 
for creativity. Folks with different abilities and disabilities are shut out of a world that is equally owed to them, <laughs> to us. Because capitalism has decided that the way our, their, their human embodiments are not useful, that there are people and beings in this world that can be discarded of without question, without honoring that that is a loss. We must rest, let people rest, let indigenous people rest, let black people rest, let women rest, let children rest, let men rest, let everyone who needs the time to remember who they are and what they actually believe in, let us rest for a moment so we can decide who we want to be and how we want to get there collectively. And I just pray for everyone on this call, genuinely from the bottom of my heart, that you are able to receive the rest that you need to move through whatever is coming up with grace, that you can treat the people in your houses as infuriating as they can be <laughs> with grace and patience. Rest is a moment by moment choice. And I really, really, really do from the bottom of my heart, pray for that for y'all. And I hope that prayer ripples out every time you give yourself a few more, a few more, um, uh, a few more snacks, you know what I'm saying? Another cup of tea, you know what I'm saying? Maybe with a little something in it, who knows? At any time that you are choosing to be with yourself. I'm with you, Westwood. And I'm really grateful that I could be here today to talk about what rest means for me. And hopefully it reverberates. And I'm very curious about what it means for you. So drop it in the chat. What does rest mean for me? Thanks everyone. Thank you, Nazra. Um, I think it would be a great opportunity to discuss that question. What does rest mean to us? in our small group breakouts after the service or now in the chat. Um, gonna bring our attention back to our beautiful chalice and our candles burning here. And I wanted to share with you our closing words. Our closing words come from a UU minister down in the States. Newly written, it was a pandemic closing words that they wrote for their congregation. And it's by Cynthia Landrum. We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, our care for each other, our service to each other, to the world and to our faith continues until we are together again, friends. Be strong, be well, be true, be loving. Thank you. Our next week's service kicks off our next monthly theme, which is hunger. And it will be done by our own Reverend Anne. At this moment in history, amidst a global pandemic with the rise of blatant extremism on the verge of a contentious US election, it's two days away from the US election. In a time of great economic uncertainty, we interrupt the common narrative and ask, what are you hungry for? I hope to see you there. I think it's gonna be a good one. In a moment, Alara will put us into some small group breakout rooms and I invite you to share your name and pronoun as long, along with what does rest mean for you. And I almost shortchanged Sheila, her beautiful last hymn. So we're gonna do that. And then Alara will put us into small group breakout rooms. Thank you. Mm -hmm.